Science Academy, the science provider of the nation. Hi everyone, today what we are going to study is about motion in straight line. Before going to the unit, I will start to, you to introduce the term a quantity. A quantity is used to measure a thing. For example, if I say about the movement, I can measure it using the distance or displacement or a speed or velocity. So here, quantity can be divided into two categories. The first category is scalar quantity. The second one is the vector quantity. What is scalar quantity? A scalar quantity is a physical quantity which can be described only by its magnitude. Is So, the example for them are speed, mass, time, distance. Also, there are several. We are taking just four examples. Speed, mass. Let's consider about mass. So, here the definition says you only magnitude is sufficient to describe the quantity. Let's think like this. If there is an obje object, if I ask you what is the amount of object, you can answer in mass. For example, if I ask you what is the mass of this pen, if you say it is 50 grams, it is sufficient that magnitude 50 gram, the amount, the numerical value 50 is sufficient to define what is it. We don't need to say 50 gram downward, 50 gram upward, 50 gram north, 50 gram south, 50 gram left, right. No need to say the direction. So, a square quantity means only the numerical value, the magnitude is sufficient to describe what is it. So, very simply, a scalar quantity is the physical quantity which only magnitude is sufficient to explain it. The examples of them are speed, mass, distance and energy and etc. But if you come to the point of vector quantity, the vector quantity is a physical quantity which can be described by its magnitude and direction. So here the definition has two things. First one, first one is magnitude. Second one, the direction. Now you might confuse what they what they are trying to say. For example, let's take the point of force. You know, a force. So you have studied in your small grades. Force means a push or a pull. It is measured in Newton. As you all know, it is measured in Newton. Let's say the phi Newton. So here, this phi is the numerical value. That is the magnitude of this force. But is this data is sufficient to define this force? It is not. Because we don't know this finite force is acting in which direction. Sometimes the force finite can act in that direction. To the right direction. Or it can act on north, south, east. So whenever you, whenever you describe a force, we need to say the magnitude as well with the direction where it is acting. Is it right, left, north, south? You can say the name, you can say the uh, magnitude, sorry, direction in according to your wish. But it is mandatory to say what is the direction. So in vector quantity, there are two things. The first one is the magnitude, the numerical value, and the second one is the direction where it is acting. Okay. So example for example for vector quantity are velocity force, acceleration, displacement. Now let's come to the differences between, difference and similarities between vector and scalar quantities. So as usual, vector needs magnitude, a numerical value, magnitude plus direction. But in scalar, only the magnitude is sufficient. Only the magnitude is sufficient. Second one, vector quantities 
cannot be added or subtracted in the usual method what we do. If I ask you to add 5 Newton and 3 Newton, you can't just say it is 8 Newton. Because you don't know which direction it is acting, either it is right or left. If they are in the opposite direction, they should subtract each other. If they are in the same direction, you should add it. So, the usual addition subtraction methodology is not cannot be used here. So, but in scalar quantity, but in scalar quantity is possible. For example, if I ask you what is the sum of 5 kilogram and 3 kilogram, definitely you will answer it is 8 kilogram, no issues. You can add them. But it is not possible to add two vectors such 8 meter second minus 2, the acceleration. You can't add two acceleration, 8 meter second minus 2 and 3 meter second minus 2. It is not possible to add those two. So initially we are differentiating what is scalar and what is vector. So a vector has a direction and a magnitude but a scalar has only a magnitude. In vector, you can't add in the usual method, in the usual method, mathematical subtraction and addition, but in scalar, you can add them in the usual method. Let's go to the initial point. The quantity is what we are going to study under this unit, unity, unit. So, in this unit, we will be studying about below, below chapters, below portion. The first one, we will study about time. Secondly, we study distance and displacement. Third, we study about speed and velocity. And the fourth, in the fourth title, we will study about acceleration. And the fifth portion, I will teach you about ST graph that is the displacement displacement time graph and six I will be teaching you about I will be teaching you about velocity time graph VT graph the seventh will study about the gravitational acceleration and Eight. I will teach you about it is not in the syllabus it is not given in your book however I will teach you it is equations of motion equations of motion so here I will introduce four different equations and then there is a major part do questions so what I need to say you all is so what I need to say you all is this unit is one of the most expensive unit according to me in O levels because it takes a major role in your O levels. Every year at least a 5 mark portion, the minimally a 5 mark portion used to be in the O level paper. However, therefore we will be focusing more on this unit. So it will be a bit complex and bit arguing portion. It is your duty to understand and study it hard. Right, so let's go in the upcoming lectures in one by one about this unit.